Right. OK. OK. Thank you. Th thank you very much indeed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever, mm -hmm. wh which is certainly very interesting. And I've been challenged um, reading it. Um, yeah. When I did go to church, which was many, many years ago, I went to a Baptist and Pentecostal type churches. Right, yeah. So yeah. this is a little different. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, there's a couple of things that puzzle me. One is Lesson 9 yeah. on prayer. Draw close to yeah. God through prayer on 37, yeah. page 37. Paragraph yeah. 1 says, Jesus taught that we should pray only to our Heavenly Father. That kind of got me thinking. I mean, Stephen prayed to Jesus, didn't he, when he was being martyred? Um, I think he was. I think he was praying to Jehovah. Um, Would you like to read the verse and show that, me that? Let's, let's, have a, let's have a look at um, Acts, where that is in Acts. Acts seven fifty nine. Um, the word God in the passage is in italic, so it's not in the Greek text. And it says in Acts 7, 59, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive oh, my yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah, I see that, yeah. So he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So at the point of his death, as he's being martyred, he yeah, previously... And the, next, the next verse, it says, then kneeling down, he cried out in a strong voice, Jehovah, do not charge this sin against them. Um... So, it yeah, doesn't he's, say he's that. Two, two different people at that point. It doesn't. Sorry? It doesn't. It doesn't say that the word Jehovah is not in the Greek text. I've looked it up in the Kingdom Interlinear translation, and it's Lord. It's Curios. The context is um, still yes. him speaking to Jesus. The word Jehovah doesn't appear in your Kingdom Interlinear translation, which the Watchtower produces once, and it doesn't appear here. It's Curios, Lord. So he's speaking to the Lord Jesus. He says Curios, Jesus. Curious, he uses Curios, Lord Jesus, in Acts 7.59. I, I will concede the word God is in italics in that verse. It's not in the Greek text. Lord Jesus received my spirit. And then he's speaking to the same person. Curios, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. So there's no, there's no break here. He's speaking to the same person in Acts 59 and 60. I found this, this verse very confusing. Because clearly Stephen is addressing Jesus in prayer at the point of his death. So he did pray to Jesus, you see. Um, well, when we look at verse 56, he, he, he says he's, he sees a vision, doesn't he? So he's speaking to the people he sees in vision. He sees Jesus standing at God's right hand. Could you read the verse rather than just sort of paraphrase? It says, verse 56, it says, uh, 55, He being full of Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven, caught sight of God's glory, and of Jesus standing at God's right hand. And he said, look, I see the heavens opened up, and the Son of Man standing at God's right hand. So this is in that vision. There's two characters there that you can speak to. No, 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 there isn't. No, there's, there's only Jesus. The, um, the Father is never seen. He's called the invisible God, who no one has heard and no one can see. Well, that's verse 55 says, so you caught sight of God's glory and of Jesus standing at God's right hand. Yes, and the phrase, the right hand of God, most people are right-handed. So in biblical times, your right arm was your sword arm, it was your stronger arm. So the phrase, the right hand of God, means a position of power and authority. It's the Mormons. Oh, yeah. it, it's 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 the Mormons who claim that their first prophet Joseph Smith saw God the Father and Jesus Christ, um, but Christianity teaches that the Father is never seen because he's he's called the invisible God. Uh, let me just prove that in John one eighteen. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll just read it. Sorry, thank you. Um, John one eighteen. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, some versions say God, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So the Father is not seen. That's right, yes. In Colossians one fifteen, the Father is the invisible God. Yes. 
So the, um, there's a verse, and I forget where it is. I'll try and find it. It says, who no one can see. Uh, talking of the Father. Yes, well, I would agree with you there, yes. So the Father is, is never seen. And I've just lost my internet connection, so I'm going to have to log on. I, I tether off a phone. Hang on a second. Uh -huh. I will try and find the verse if I if I can. Um, so when it says, he saw, I look, I see the heavens open, verse 56, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. It's it's not saying, it, it's, it's not saying that, um, I'm trying to do three things at the same time, sorry. It's not saying that he saw God the Father. Right hand simply means the position of power or authority. So he saw a vision of Christ, who I believe is in heaven. I don't believe Jesus has returned to the earth at this stage. I think he's just a vision of Jesus. Right hand of God yeah, means yeah, yeah. A, Jesus as a, a, in a position of power and authority. At least that's how I would see it. Hmm. It says he sees God's glory. So you know, just as in the, in the revelation uh, to, to John, God was seen in his glory, his heavenly throne is seen. There's a, there's a vision of his glory, even though he's not directly seen. So, you know, it, to me reading that, it looks like John is seeing, he knows God is present, even though he's not looking at him directly, because he can't. But God's glory is there, and then at God's right hand is his son, who, yeah, has raised to the heavens into a position of authority, definitely. Um, well, if you wish to refer to Revelation, you need to actually read the verse. I, I can't respond to a paraphrase. Often when people paraphrase the Bible, they're sort of making stuff up a little bit and changing bits and pieces. Um, so in Acts seven fifty nine, my point is that Stephen prayed to Jesus. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So he he's praying to Jesus. That's that's the only point I'm I'm making. It shouldn't be that that shocking. I mean, are you aware that Jehovah's Witnesses pray to Jesus for half of their history? Um, well, as Jehovah's Witnesses, I have um, looked into the Bible and studied the Scriptures. We're an organisation that, as we look at these things, will change. So if we decide that something is scriptural and that um, you know what we were doing before did not fit in fully with the scriptures then we will change so we're not an organization such as many of the churches that absorb traditions and are unwilling to change well any anyone could say that couldn't they the mormons the seventh-day adventist extreme pentecostal groups the way international uh, assemblies of Yahweh they could all just say what you've said you know we we make changes um, I'm finding this a little difficult um, Jehovah's Witnesses from 1879 to 1953 pray to Jesus I, I've looked at the Watchtower Charter a couple of Watchtower right. Charters for instance the 1945 Charter on page two says that this society was set up for the public worship of Almighty God and Jesus Christ. And that wasn't done away with until the 1st of January 1954 Watchtower, page, page 31. So right. from 1879 to 1953, Jehovah's Witnesses worshipped both the Father and the Son. Okay, but as I just said, you know, we've made that change. We don't believe it's scriptural. Well, why didn't the Almighty God? He's the one that we worship, and He's the one that we pray to. Jesus is the only avenue of prayer, so we have to pray in Jesus Christ's name. He uh, He is our uh, ransomer, our, opens us to pray to God, but um, we don't pray to Jesus Christ. But you used to. That's the point I'm making. It's it's one. It's an awfully big change, isn't it, to worship both the Father and the Son, and then say we're only going to worship the Father from now on. I mean, it, it's quite a change, don't you think? It is definitely a change, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you used to worship Jesus for half your history. All I'm saying is it's quite clear that Stephen prayed to Jesus. 
here in Acts 7.59, Lord Jesus received my spirit. Wouldn't I be correct that he's praying to Jesus? There's a difference between praying to and talking to. So, uh, you know, he's in the vision there. He can see Jesus Christ. That's the person he can see. Well, he he's can't going to, physically he, see. Jesus is in heaven. He's seeing a vision of Jesus, but Jesus is in heaven. So if Stephen's on the earth and Jesus is in heaven, surely he's praying to Jesus when he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I wouldn't have said so. Why not? You know, the, the, you know when, uh, when Jesus and his disciples saw the transfiguration, you know, the, the people that were alongside Jesus Christ, the disciples spoke to them. That's not praying to them. But you need, to read, you, them. you need to read the verse. You need to read the verse, because I think if you go to the Transfiguration passage, that's not what the passage actually says. Uh... It says in verse 4, Acts mark 9 4 they were talking to jesus they weren't talking to them meaning the apostles uh i'll, I'll read it uh mark 9 2 uh, and uh, now after six days jesus took peter james and john and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them his clothes became shining exceeding white like snow such as no launderer on earth can whiten them and elijah appeared to them with moses and they were talking to jesus then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. They, they weren't, the disciples weren't talking to Moses and Elijah, as you said. I think you just need to read the verse, and, and it becomes apparent they were talking to Jesus. They weren't talking to Jesus and the disciples. But perhaps we're getting sidetracked. Um... So are you saying that Stephen was not praying to Jesus in Acts 7.59? It, it, it looks like a normal... If, if you've got somebody in front of you in a vision, does that mean that when you talk to them, you are praying to them? Well, Jesus is... It's a vision of Jesus, so Jesus is in heaven. This isn't the second coming of Jesus. Jesus hasn't physically returned to this earth to stand before Stephen. So Jesus is in heaven and Stephen's on the earth. He does see a vision of Jesus... Right, a vision would be something like a, a mirage that you would see in the desert, right? But he's, and that's a very loose explanation, by the way. I'm not insisting you take that literally. Um, but because Stephen is on the earth and Jesus is in heaven, when Stephen says, "Lord Jesus, receive my spirit," surely that would be a prayer addressed to Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm being a bit pedantic and going on about this, but it has bothered me, and I do appreciate your your help, sir. have to uh, agree to disagree on this okay okay um there's another verse where paul um says that he prayed to jesus and that's in second corinthians 12 it concerns the thorn in the flesh second corinthians 12 7 to 9 um again i'm reading from the new new king james version and lest i should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Lord is curious there. It refers to Jesus. And he said to me, so God the Father is not the one speaking here, because... And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I'm most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ, that's the one he's speaking to, may rest upon me. Now, he says the power of Christ because the Lord he pleaded to three times was Christ. And when Paul says he pleaded three times that this thorn in the flesh might be removed, he's praying to Jesus. I've got, I've got um, 
the appendix I've got here talking about Kyrios says that he can refer either to Jesus or to Jehovah, depending on the context. Yes, of course. Of course. Yeah. But, but here, as I've shown you, the context is Christ. Of course, there are other passages where the, the Father is called Lord, Kyrios. There are other passages in the New Testament where Jesus is called Lord. There are passages in the New Testament where the Father is called God, Theos. There are passages in the New Testament where the Son, Jesus, is called Theos. So, yeah, the, the context determines everything. But in verse 9, Paul says that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And so he's pleading with the Lord Jesus in verse 8. And he explains that he's, he, Jesus won't remove this thorn in the flesh, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's the one he's praying to. So the context here for Curios Lord is Christ. Paul is praying to Christ three times to remove the thorn in the flesh. I mean, how else can this be explained other than prayer? I've got here a footnote. It says, Paul uses the Greek expression, uh, Kyrios, the Lord, which in some instances is used to refer to Jehovah and others to Jesus. In this case, it is logical to conclude that Paul speaks of making three heartfelt requests to the Lord Jehovah, the hearer of prayer, as it is referred to in Psalm 65, verse 2. He is the one to whom all prayers are properly addressed. And it quotes Psalm 145, 18, and um, Philippians 4, verse 6. Excuse me, which notes... In answering you... Paul, Jehovah referred to the undeserved kindness along with the power that Jehovah generously gives to his servants. But, excuse so, me. Some have pointed out that in verse 9, Paul also speaks of the power of the Christ. However, Paul's use of that phrase does not mean that he addressed his three requests to Christ. Jesus has power, but it comes to him from the source of all godly power, Jehovah. Excuse me, who wrote that footnote? Which footnote? You, you're reading from a footnote? In... I'm reading from a footnote in the um, New World Translation. Right, who wrote that footnote? Could you give me the name of the scholar who wrote that? Uh, the, the New World Translation um, team remain anonymous. Why? Um, because they prefer to give glory to Jehovah rather than receive it for themselves. Could it be that they have no theological training? That's why they're anonymous? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Um, so you're quoting an anonymous source to me. I mean, I would kind of disregard and disrespect an anonymous source. If someone's going to write something, they put their name at the end of it so you can check them up to see if they really are a top scholar, or whether they're just a Billy Bob making it all up as they go along. Um, it's ridiculous. Paul is playing, praying to Jesus concerning this thing. Verse 8, I pleaded with the Lord, Curios, three times. It will be Curio, I think. I'm working from memory. That it might depart from me. And he said to me, same speaker, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. But the context is Christ. Christ is the can one I he's speaking you, to. Uh, can I ask uh, yeah. you, are, are you happy in your beliefs that you have at the moment? I want to be biblical. I want to obey the Bible. It's not a case of being happy. Uh, uh, there's things in the Bible I don't I don't particularly like. But it's not a case of me trying to look and be happy. It's a case of me trying no, no, to be what, biblical. What, what I'm asking is, uh, I am not uh, trying to change your view. If you've got a view, that's fine. So, you know, I'm just wondering what the purpose of this phone call is. Um, well, I want to know what the Watchtower teaches about prayer because I found some passages in the Bible where, as I said, they pray to Jesus. And I, I should have mentioned, actually, in the first verse we looked at, Acts 7.59, that a footnote in the 1984 edition of the New World Translation says, Epikaleo, which is numbered 1,941 in Strong's, means invocation or prayer. So it even says in the 1984 edition that this is a prayer, to, you know, it's a prayer to Jesus. Uh, I should have pointed pointed that out. Um, okay, there's one final verse, uh, Acts twenty two twenty, where John, in the penultimate verse in the Bible, as a summary to the book of Revelation, 
he also prays to Jesus. Uh, John writes in John 22 verse 20, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. When he says, even so, come Lord Jesus, that's a prayer to Jesus. In Acts 22.20. Oh, sorry, Acts 22, 20. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Revelation 22, 20. I do beg your pardon. All right. I'm, I'm... Again, it's a situation where John was in a vision. He, he, the entire revelation takes place in a vision. Agreed. Uh, uh, verse 1 of chapter 1 says a revelation by Jesus Christ which God gave him agreed so agreed agreed that shortly take place. agreed and the vision ends with the word amen in verse 20 he, he who testifies to these things says surely I am coming quickly amen right so that's the end of the revelation then John prays, even so, come Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Revelation 22, 20 to 21. I mean, amen isn't used only in prayer. It means so be it. It means surely. It, you know, it's, it's actually used as a title for Jesus in the Revelation. But it's, it's, a, it's a cut-off. So the words, even so, come Lord Jesus are a prayer of John to Jesus requesting his haste return his his hasty return I should have said uh, it, it appears that you've sort of made this call not to, fight, to, to pick fault with Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, you know, not to not because you are interested in moving forward as one of Jehovah's Witnesses well, so hold on, hold on. What do you what do you mean? Excuse me. What do you mean moving forward as one of Jehovah's Witnesses? I'm under no obligation to join every religious group. No, no, no. So I'm just wondering, what is the purpose of you calling us? Well, I'm I'm reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever, and I wanted to understand it. I'm sorry if I I didn't mean to cause offence or be rude. Um, that wasn't my intention. I'm sorry if I have. Um. But I think, I think, you know, it's one of these conversations where we could be at this for hours and hours. And, well, aren't, um, aren't most Bible conversations like that for hours and hours when people sort of look at the scriptures and they try to determine what the scriptures say, for me, for, for the point of obeying the scriptures? Well, I mean, isn't yeah, it a good I'm, thing? I mean, isn't it a good thing to look at the scriptures for hours and hours? If, at the end of that, we are obeying scripture I don't think we're going to agree on this particular subject though well we don't we don't have to agree it's God who I want to agree with it's the author of the Bible I wish to agree with whether we agree or not is of secondary importance um, what's important is that I want to obey scripture and do the will of Jehovah God which is revealed in scripture um, there's a second thing that, that puzzles me, and that's the New Covenant. Yes. Um, I would understand the New Covenant as being a covenant between God and men. I'm going to ask people to please help me. I live on a limited income and I cannot possibly afford to telephone abroad. However, Zoom calls are free. So if people were to get me Zoom details for Kingdom Halls in their country, which is outside of the UK, and email them to me, my email is at the start of most of my videos, then I can contact those Kingdom Halls for free. Um, I would need the name of the congregation. I'm very insistent that the name of the congregation is given. The town or city the state, maybe your state has an abbreviation, so write it out in full, give the abbreviation as well. Which country are you in? Please don't make any assumptions that I'm going to understand this. If if you're in Australia or New Zealand or, or Canada, I'm not going to understand um, 
abbreviation. So write everything out clearly. Um, the Zoom log on details, uh, the passcode, the times of the meetings, and which time zone each of these Kingdom Halls are in. For instance, if you were to get me three Kingdom Halls in America, it would be great to have one on Eastern Standard Time, which is five hours ahead of the UK, one on Mountain Standard Time, which is seven hours ahead of the UK, and one in California, which is eight hours ahead of the UK. Do you, do you get it? So in, on one Sunday, when I'm going to be doing this Zoom work, I can contact all three. If you live in the UK and you're willing to spend a little bit of money to help me, why not go on jw.org, scroll down to find a meeting, and then type in the search box France or Spain or Belgium or Holland or Germany and look for an English-speaking congregation in those countries. Now, I reckon if you can get me three or four English-speaking congregations in that country, say France, you're going to put the France branch, I couldn't say that, could I? The, the branch in France to all the trouble of contacting every single English-speaking congregation in that country saying, Oh, may we, may we, do not speak to this Robert. He is a horrible roast beef man. Oh, he's horrible. You, you get the picture? It's going to cause them a lot of trouble to contact all the Kingdom Halls telling them not to speak to me. So you're causing them trouble. So if people could help me, even if just one or two contacts, that would be appreciated. But please be very clear and very precise, because if you're not precise and clear, I can't use the information. And I certainly cannot afford to telephone abroad. Bear in mind that um, I haven't done any thus far from the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I haven't been able to contact Jersey and Guernsey, which are on the French um, phone system, even though they're part of the UK. And I haven't been able to contact the Isle of Man, which is on the Republic of Ireland phone system. So check on my channel. See if I've done Jersey or Guernsey or Paris or Barcelona or Berlin. And if I haven't, why don't you phone up those congregations, get the Zoom details for an English speaking congregation and then give that to me and then I can make some more videos. Thank you.